when creating a lace edge that moves, you need a cast on that can travel this distance. When using a traditional cast on, it's often too tight and your lace motif will cup up. So I'm gonna show you my favorite cast on, which is gonna use two needles. Now this is best done with a straight needle. And then when you knit your first row, you can go ahead and knit it onto your circular. But because this is gonna twist your stitches around, it's best to start with a straight. Now the first thing we wanna do is measure out our yarn. And if you're used to using the wrap method, which is leaving a bit of a tail and wrapping the yarn around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to estimate ten stitches. Because we're going to be using a spacer needle, you'll find that a wrap of eleven or twelve will be a good measure for ten stitches. So once I have that measure, I'll be able to use it and say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and a little bit. I'm going to cast on for my sleeve. And I will be putting in a slip knot. It's one of the few times that I use a slip knot. And you're going to see it's because it's easier to control the cast on. Now this is a small variation of long tail that is going to put the thumb yarn around a DPN to add more space. So let's just break down long tail for a second. When we enter that thumb yarn, when we put the needle into the near side of the thumb yarn, we're entering a loop on the needle. And when we wrap over the finger yarn and we pull that loop through, we've actually knit one stitch. The thumb yarn is what creates the space between these stitches. Even when I leave my finger on the needle to keep them spaced apart, we need to control this thumb yarn. So with long tail, we normally remove the thumb and simply tighten back up and repeat. We cast a stitch on by pulling the finger yarn through the thumb loop but then at this point, we remove the thumb and we tighten down. So the small variation we're going to put on it is that that loop of yarn around my thumb is going to go around a DPN to create extra space. I'm gonna use a US1 DPN. The larger the needle, the more elastic the cast on. Now notice I'm not putting a slip knot around the DPN. I'm simply holding it underneath the needle and it's going between those two pieces of yarn. Now I'm only casting on to the knitting needle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is enter the thumb yarn with both needles. But because I only want to cast on with my knitting needle, the yarn actually goes between the two needles because it's only going to wrap around the knitting needle. And then I pull that new loop through the old loop. But before I remove the thumb and tighten down, I'm going to put that loop of yarn that's on my thumb right onto the DPN, and then I'll tighten it down. Now there's another step after this, but first I just want to get used to step number one. So step number one, is we enter the thumb yarn with both needles. We cast on only onto the top knitting needle by moving that yarn between the two needles to wrap around the knitting needle, pull that loop through, and then pop the thumb yarn onto the DPN. Let me look at that again. Both needles go in, finger yarn wraps around only knitting needle, pull that loop through and dump the spacer loop, the loop on your thumb, right onto your DPN. But I want to turn that around and show you what that leaves is this big ginormous open braid. So I want to add a second step to close that up into a neat little braid so it's not a big sloppy edge. So here we go. Once again, we're going to start 
with that DPN in the middle, right underneath, it's not attached at all. And I'm going to bring both needles into the thumb yarn, cast onto the knitting needle only by pulling that loop through, and I'm gonna pop it on to the thumb yarn. But now what I wanna do is close that loop. So I'm gonna do a move that's gonna twist it around. And what I'm actually doing, it's as if between each stitch, I dropped the yarn, twisted them around each other, and put my fingers back in. But obviously that would be really futzy to do. So instead, I cast one on the needle, I put the thumb yarn on, and I'm gonna move those needles all the way around this little triangle of yarn. This is like the Bermuda Triangle, so my needles aren't gonna go inside. I wanna think of the heads of the stitches like the back of a dog. So the dog needs to roll onto his back first. There's his little feet. It's gonna go under the Bermuda Triangle and back up onto his feet. So you can see both needles move. And what it's done is it's put a little twist around that yarn. So let's look at that again. I cast on one stitch. I put the spacer yarn right on my thumb. I roll the dog onto his back. So knitting needle is underneath now. DPN is on top. It moves underneath that triangle and back up onto its feet. And we'll look at that a few more times. Cast onto the knitting needle only, put the thumb yarn onto the DPN, DPN on top, underneath the Bermuda Triangle, back up. So we're always moving both needles all the way around. So if you take a look now, you can see a nice closed tight braid. So I'm gonna keep casting on and I have here two, four, six, eight. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my lace markers in between each repeat. There's nine, 10, 11. And I think you can see now with the twisting around why a circular needle is kind of difficult. So I'm gonna come back to you when I've cast on all my stitches and we'll take a look at how we work this first row. So I've finished casting on and of course I have that last wrap, which means the, th the thumb yarn is just kind of loose hanging over there. So I'm gonna hang on to it for a second going to turn around and I can pull that DPN out now. I'm totally done with it. Now already, I'm just going to kind of start to stretch this out. You'll be able to see how it's so stretchy. It fills my whole needle. So that's really going to work great with the lace. So all I need to do when I work that first row is just hang on to that tail for a second. So if you're a thrower, it's quite easy because you can hang on to the tail with your left hand. And here my first row in this pattern happens to be a pearl. And I would be able to just start purling. And once I, I, I get one stitch done, I can let go of the tail. If you're a thrower, what you wanna do is have that, that little thumb yarn crossed over that needle get your knitting yarn in your left hand and just hang onto it with your index finger just until you knit the first stitch. Once you do, you can let go and you're done. And that's all there is to the two needle cast on.